So I've been dating this guy for two years now. We come from different backgrounds. He comes from a family that is not exactly rich, but can afford having multiple properties. And my boyfriend had his education paid for him. He is now a software engineer. He lives in one of their houses. Typical white family with the mom being specially difficult. I, on the other hand, come from a family of immigrants from Latin America. We live in the poorest part of the city and I can afford education as I work and study. Plus I have a half scholarship. I'm graduating this year in economics. A year ago, I found it weird that my boyfriend didn't want to introduce me to his family. But when he did, I got why he didn't want to. Here's the list of things she said about me after meeting me for the first time. She is too fat, should lose some kilograms, and that butt is too big. She dresses too provocatively, should learn how to dress. Be careful because people like her, Latinas, usually go after money. Be sure to use protection. I would hate to have those grandchildren, I know this, as he asked her on the telephone about her opinion about me the day after meeting. And I was there listening. He got really angry as I couldn't help but cry about it. I met him through friends that, like him, love video games. He knows I don't care about the money. He didn't talk to her or his dad for almost a month. I told him to please forgive her as she called every day, saying she was sorry with him. She never apologized to me. And I didn't want to create a conflict in the family. After this, last Christmas, they invited us to have dinner, and I didn't know. But they prepared gifts for the both of us, a wallet for him and a pajama for me. Only problem is that the pajama was an XXXL. I'm curvy, but my size is an M. I didn't want to create drama, so I didn't say anything about it. So as I am graduating, my boyfriend wants me to move in with him. I told him to first talk with his family as the house is theirs. Today he was troubled and I asked him what was happening. He told me his parents told him that, okay, I can move in with him, but I need to pay them rent as Latinas usually think that everything should be handed to us. And this is a way to make sure I am not using him for his house or money. I'm feeling so offended. I told him that, okay, I can pay the rent. But to be honest at this point, even though I would love to live with him, I would prefer to pay anywhere else but them. I don't know if I should confront them and this relationship or what to do or PC. I told him to look somewhere else to live together, but he doesn't want to. He says that staying at the house his parents gave him allows him to save more money in order to get a house that is ours quicker. Update plus some context slash clarifications. First of all, thank you for all the comments and the support. I didn't expect so many. So after thinking all night about it, I've decided I will talk to my boyfriend on Wednesday. And first of all, I want to know how much they want to charge me for living in their place, and only if it's below market value agree on it. If not, I can continue living with my parents a few more months and save money for my own place. Also, even if it's below, I will tell my boyfriend that we should split said rent, as I also want to save money for our future home, and having me paying rent for a house he's been living for free isn't fair. He also mentioned that when moving, we should split bills. So again, just fair. About my in-laws, I am tired of them. His dad doesn't do anything, at least that I know. But consoles the wife, saying she is the way she is, indirectly supporting her behavior. I told myself that her behavior was overprotective, as my boyfriend is the youngest child, and I am his first girlfriend. Not no idiots here. I will stop pushing my boyfriend toward them. And eventually, if they continue like this, Ask him to go no contact. Clarifications? By typical white family, I didn't mean to talk about their behavior or be discriminatory. I mean that I met several members and all of them are white. Not only close family, my boyfriend, parents, older sister, and sister's boyfriend. But everyone, my boyfriend, is the only one having a partner who is not white. Please excuse any grammatical mistakes. We are French and my family is from Colombia. So English is not my first language. About her comment with hating having our grandchildren. Her excuse for her comment was that she would hate it because we are too young and haven't experienced life enough. Do I buy it? Not after the other comments she made, but it's true. I am only 23. We plan to have a family, but in 10 years at least. So if in the future she happens to mistreat our children, she will be dead to us. I won't allow my kids to suffer. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, my advice, 
Move in with him, have him pay half of the rent, and help him save up for a place of your own as soon as possible. The sooner you two escape from their direct control, housing, the better. Once you have a place of your own, you get to dictate your own terms. If you are not able to do this, then just break up. The hardship that follows is not worth it otherwise. Comment two. Unless you plan on changing races, then this is only the tip of the iceberg. Could you tolerate them saying mean things about their grandchildren? No contact with them or girl. Your life will never be calm. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around to hear more about my life. Well, it's been a week since I last updated, and let me tell you, it's been, well, interesting. I had that talk with my boyfriend about the rent, and guess what? They wanted to charge me way above market value. It was like they were trying to push me away or milk me for all I'm worth. I told him straight up, no way I'm paying that much. He seemed upset, but agreed to talk to his parents about it. In the meantime, I've been busy with my graduation and job hunting. I landed an interview with a big firm downtown, and they seemed really impressed with me. I was feeling pretty good about myself until I got home and found my boyfriend looking like someone had run over his dog. Turns out, his parents had called him after our talk and laid down an ultimatum. If he didn't make me pay the inflated rent, they would kick him out of the house. Can you believe that? They were willing to throw their own son out on the street over this. He was torn up about it, saying he didn't know what to do. I was fuming. I wanted to confront them so badly, but I held back. I didn't want to make things worse for him. But inside, and I was thinking, how can they be so cruel? It's like they don't even see me as a person, just some gold digger after their precious son's money. A few days later, my boyfriend came to me with a solution. He'd found a small apartment that we could afford together, and he was willing to move out of his parents' house to be with me. It was a big step, and I was touched that he'd do that for us. But then he dropped another news. His sister, who had always been nice to me, had been talking behind my back. She told him that she thought I was a bad influence and that I was going to drag him down with me. That hurt, you know? I thought she was different from the rest of his family, but I guess I was wrong. So now we're in this tiny apartment, and it's a struggle. We're both working and trying to save up, but it's hard. And the worst part is, he's still talking to his family like nothing happened. He acts like they didn't just try to sabotage our relationship. It's like he's blind to how toxic they are. But I'm trying to stay positive. I got the job at the firm, and I'm starting soon. It's a good opportunity for me, and I'm determined to make the most of it. I'm going to build a life for myself, with or without his family's approval. Thanks for reading. Ada for staying with my husband after he proposed an open marriage, but only for him. After opening up conversations around sexuality, intimacy life, boundaries, loyalty, trust, etc. My husband of nearly 14 years told me for the first time that his ideal scenario would be to have an open marriage where we each would be able to sleep with other women. He is straight and I am bi. He would ideally like to be able to have intimacy with other women to satisfy his need for a release when I'm not able to provide that for him. His examples, like when I'm sick or not feeling up to it. And in that ideal scenario, I would not be able to sleep with other men, but I could with other women. I think mainly because that is an intimacy fantasy of his. I asked why, and he said that it comes with a higher risk that I could form feelings for another guy if I'm having intimacy with him. Whereas his risk for developing feelings for another woman is lower. In recent days, there have been a lot of revelations about these topics, but this is a new one. For context, we are in a closed, monogamous relationship. And up until recently, I thought that was what he wanted or preferred, like I do. I don't know how to cope with this information or even process it. Is there any perspective that anyone could please provide? Because in my ideal world, I want to be the only woman that he wants to be with because that's how I feel about him. Is this just an intimacy fantasy and nothing harmful? Or is this selfishness hypocrisy? Update for clarity. He is not formally asking for this scenario or pushing for it because he knows I will say no. He has stated this is his preference or ideal. One, open relationship for him with the exception of only women for me. Two, closed relationship 
The nuances that trouble me are as follows. In his ideal world, he could have intimacy with other women, and I could too, but I wouldn't sleep with other men. Thus a bizarre fetishizing double standard, even in this hypothetical world. He was not upfront or clear about this in the beginning of the relationship or any other time in the last decade and a half. In this scenario, it would be in situations like when I'm sick or not having enough intimacy to meet his needs, that is, not just a fantasy of getting to have intimacy with someone else. He has added additional statements like, if the circumstances were right, I probably couldn't trust him. I'll never get that one out of my head but then later backtracked to say that it would be if we had an agreement or in very rare circumstances. Our ideals do not align. My wish would be that they would, but I know that isn't always the case. So I'm asking how to cope when one person is monogamous and the other person isn't. How do you cope when you find out that your current relationship boundaries aren't your partner's ideals? How does one feel good about knowing that your partner would choose differently if you'd allow it I'm sure I'm not the only woman who has felt insecure because they partner expressed they would prefer an open relationship or to sleep with other people. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. One weenie policies are problematic for so many reasons. The fact that he would encourage it because it's a fantasy is gross and fetishizing of WWW relationships. That's not even getting into all the other reasons it's a problem. Look, I'm a bisexual woman, and I'm currently in polyamorous relationships. So please listen when I tell you that his ideal intimacy life is terrible, misogynistic, and won't turn out the way he hopes at all. Comment 2. Oh, no, no, no. Why should you, as a bisexual female, limit yourself to only females? Tell him you will sleep with other women and well-endowed men for when he just isn't measuring up to your expectations. You know, like when he's tired or had too much to drink and can't rise to the occasion. Now for the update, thanks for sticking around. Well, a lot has happened since I last wrote. So remember how my husband dropped that bomb about wanting an open marriage? Turns out he wasn't just talking in hypotheticals. I found out he's been messaging women online, not just any women, but my former best friend. Yeah, the one who was like a sister to me. He said it was just fantasy, that he never intended to meet up with her. But how am I supposed to believe that? I was furious, felt betrayed. But then he lost his job. The company he worked for went under, and just like that, we were on the brink of losing everything. I couldn't leave him, not when he was down like that. So I stayed, supported us on my income, and tried to forget the messages I saw. But it didn't stop there. My sister, who's always been the golden child, announced she was getting married. To her high school sweetheart, no less. And guess who she asked to be her maid of honor? Me. I should have been happy, but all I could think about was how my own marriage was crumbling. Then the wedding day came, and my husband, he did something unthinkable. He got drunk, made a scene during the reception, and confessed his feelings for my former best friend in front of everyone. My family, her family, it was a mess. I was humiliated, but I told myself he was just drunk that it didn't mean anything. After the wedding fiasco, things at home got worse. We were fighting all the time about money, about trust, about everything. And then one day, he came home with a new car, a luxury model that we couldn't possibly afford. He said he got a great deal, that it was a sign of things turning around for us, but I knew better. He'd taken out a loan behind my back, sinking us further into debt. I was at my wits end, but then my mom got sick, really sick. And in the midst of all this chaos, I had to be there for her. I spent days at the hospital, nights worrying about bills and my husband's latest antics. But through it all, he was there, by my side, supporting me. It made me remember why I fell in love with him in the first place. And just when I thought we might get through this, another blow came. My mom passed away. It was sudden and I was devastated. My husband, he tried to comfort me. But all I could see was the man who had betrayed me, who had lied and made a fool of me. Now I'm just trying to pick up the pieces. I'm grieving my mom, dealing with my sister's newlywed bliss, and trying to figure out what to do with my husband. He's apologetic and says he wants to make things right, but I don't know if I can ever trust him again. I'm still here though, 
fear. Maybe it's the fear of being alone, or maybe it's hope that things can get better. But I'm still here. Thanks for reading. Ada for dumping my boyfriend after discovering his corny secrets and betrayal. Edit. I've posted a comment about my feelings after reading the comments and me talking to him. It has our plans for what we do next. I want to just reiterate that before we both came clean about our cheating, I found his apps. I confessed to him what I did. We both had a very physical relationship with each other. We still love each other. It's a lot to process. Also, people think it's so easy to confront someone you love with what you've seen. It's horrible for both sides. He knows he's bisexual. I've known he's bisexual. The problem is the corn preference and choosing that over real intimacy. I've tried for seven years to talk about his sexuality and he gets very irate when I try to suggest that maybe it goes beyond corn and maybe he has things he needs to work out. He says, there's nothing to work out. I know who I am and I'm sick of you asking me if it's deeper than that. I don't wanna be with a man, I wanna be in a relationship with a woman. I've been with my boyfriend for going on seven years. It took me a while to fall in love with him, but I did and we have been best friends. But we've had a lot of issues since last year. I found out that he downloaded 16 different dating apps that were like Grindr, Transmeet, Tinder, etc., and a few other gay and trans dating sites. I admitted I cheated and I think he kind of got me to accept we both fucked up. So let's move forward. I've known the first couple of months he admitted to me he had intimacy with a guy in high school. He has bisexual tendencies, but he leans more to being in a relationship with women. It took me a long freaking time to digest that and trust that he meant it when he said he loves me and is attracted to me. I know everyone should just go with the flow and it's normal, man. But for me, I like a man that's just attracted to females. I think everyone has a right to have a preference of who their life partner should be. Fast forward, we had a horrible breakup and I hadn't seen him since December of last year, literally until this week. I have cried several times. He's being weird about his phone, TBH. I'm set up in the bed and he's pretending to be asleep. And I think it's so I don't snoop. So I said, I don't trust you. He let me look through his phone and I saw on his camera roll videos of trans women, like femboy, cat ear wearing, cringy AF corn. The stuff we joke about, not in a hateful way. What's even worse is that one night I told him I feel sexually neglected because I send him nudes, and he doesn't react. So he decided to strike up dirty talking and sending me pics back. Guess what I saw saved within the same five minutes? Trans corn, and he's lying to me, saying he's watching my videos. My self-worth is just shot. I feel like I deserve better. I shouldn't have to cry to my boyfriend that I feel sexually neglected because it's not that he's not getting aroused. He's just not sexually engaging me. Of course, when I confront him about this stuff, he cries and says, I'm the only girl he's opened up about. I find it by accident. He doesn't tell me. My question here is, when does it become fricked up that I choose to find someone that wants me? I watch corn myself, but I mean, Jesus Christ. How many more years do I have to keep stumbling on this and just feel worthless? It hurts so freaking much, but I haven't been happy for quite some time. Am I a fricked up person for wanting to leave my boyfriend, for choosing gay and trans corn? You can only tell me you're sexually attracted to me so many times until I see what he actually is sexually attracted to. I'm needing some advice. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. So wait a minute. You're here begging for sympathy when you cheated on him? Why is this so catered to you? You sound like a problem. He said to you that you're the only one he's opened up to and you cheated on him? Why haven't you helped him with his corn addiction? He sounds like he's spiraling. Comment two, just end the relationship. You both have clearly shown that you don't want to be with each other. You by your cheating and him by his attempts at cheating. Why are you two dragging this out? His sexuality really doesn't matter here. You guys have both hurt each other. Now for the update, thanks for the support on my last post. It's been very eventful since then. Just when I thought things couldn't get more complicated, they did. Remember the side character I mentioned before, the one who always had my back? Well, turns out they were stirring the pot behind my back. They'd been feeding my boyfriend information about my whereabouts and doubts, making my already shaky trust crumble to dust. It all came to a head when I found out they were the ones who suggested he download those dating apps. They said it would 
help him explore his sexuality more freely. I couldn't believe it. This person, who I thought was a friend, was pushing my boyfriend away from me, encouraging him to keep secrets. The betrayal stung like a slap in the face. I confronted them, and the argument that followed was nothing short of a soap opera climax. Accusations flew, and harsh truths were revealed. They admitted to being jealous of my relationship, despite its flaws. They wanted what I had and were willing to sabotage it to get a chance for themselves. I was done. I cut them out of my life right then and there. It was a tough decision, but necessary. I couldn't have someone so toxic in my life, especially when I was trying to mend things with my boyfriend. But life has a funny way of throwing curveballs. Just as I was dealing with this fallout, my boyfriend dropped another news. He'd been seeing one of the trans women from the videos. It wasn't just corn, it was real. He said it started after our breakup, but that didn't make it any less painful. I was devastated. All the trust we'd built up, all the conversations we'd had about honesty and fidelity felt like a joke. I felt like I was living in a bad dream, waiting to wake up. The aftermath was messy. There were tears, shouting matches, and long, sleepless nights. I had to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Was this relationship worth all this pain? Was I holding on to something that was already broken beyond repair? In the end, I made the decision to walk away. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I knew it was right for me. I couldn't keep being the only one fighting for a relationship that was clearly not working. I needed to find my self-worth again, and I couldn't do that with him by my side, so that's where I'm at now, picking up the pieces of my life and trying to move forward. It's not easy, but I know it's what I need to do. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.